Hey y'all, Patrick here with Tomon's Guitars and Basses. And today I wanted to look at five great songs that have killer bass lines that are in E flat tuning. So E flat tuning, or otherwise known as a half step down or D sharp tuning, whatever you wanna call it, it doesn't matter. Instead of it going a full step down from E to D, it goes from E to E flat. And the same with all your other strings too. Your E, A, D, and G just go down half a step. Now tuning a half step down might not seem like a very big deal. Heck, you probably don't even need to really adjust your truss rod or your action at all. But there are a ton of bands out there that exclusively use the half step down tuning for basically their entire catalog. And it's just like tuning in drop D like we talked about a few weeks ago, where it can add a lot of creativity and be a whole lot of fun. And so to help convince you or inspire you to try out different tunings, I wanted to check out five songs that just have killer bass lines that are a half step down. For our first song today, we'll be checking out Thin Lizzy's first single from their 1976 album, Jailbreak. And that song is the classic, The Boys Are Back In Town. What really is there to say about this song that hasn't been said over the decades? It's an absolute classic, an absolute banger, and an absolute blast to play. You have the late and great Phil Lynette going crazy on the bass while singing, by the way, which is just a crazy feat in itself. And this song, again, is an absolute blast to play. So without further ado, here's The Boys Are Back In Town by Thin Lizzy. Next up, we have the opening track from The Killer's 2004 debut album, Hot Fuss, and that is Ginny Was A Friend Of Mine. I have to say that when I first heard the song, I was like 13, 12, something like that, and it absolutely blew me away. Not only how killer the bass line was, but how prominent it was in the mix. Of course, I didn't know anything about mixing at the time. Again, I was 12, but it's just something that really stuck with me was being able to hear the bass loud and clear. And not only that, but the bass line itself is so groovy and an absolute blast to play. You go up and down the fretboard with the different staccatos and different ways of playing it that is just so fun. Now, Mark Stormer is the basis for The Killers, and to me, he's pretty underrated. The Killers have some absolutely, I guess, pun intended, killer bass lines, and I think Mark is just absolutely knocking it out of the park. So here's Ginny Was a Friend of Mine by The Killers. <laughs> Next up, we have the first single off of Rage Against the Machine's 1996 album, Evil Empire. Now, this song is Bulls on Parade. This song is absolutely huge, of course, but it's one of those things where it's just like, you know what? Even stripped back, it's so simple, but so good. So powerful, so groovy at the same time. And Tim Comerford on bass, as always, absolutely kills it. There's so much power and so much enthusiasm in his playing that it's just infectious to play along with. So here is Bulls on Parade by Rage Against the Machine. For number four today, we have the second single from Alice in Chains' first album, Facelift, Man in the Box. Now, I have a whole lot of nostalgia for this song just because I heard it so much on the radio growing up, but it was always captivating to me because of the energy and power that was within it. You have the rhythm section going crazy, that bass and those drums going nuts, Jerry Cantrell's killer talk box lines, as well as insane solo. And of course, how could I not talk about his and Lane Staley's dual vocals that just go 
absolutely insane. Really, I think that's one of the things that really captivated me growing up about this song was the amount of energy and power in Lane Staley's voice. It was absolutely incredible to me and it's something that's really stuck with me. Now for the bass line itself, the late and great Mike Starr did such a phenomenal job with it. Now with the bass line in the chorus, I feel he could have just gone with the root notes and it would have still been pretty good, but he decided to do these fills that just make it sound so full to me. And it just has this great walking bass line that essentially just walks up and down the fretboard and is just an absolute blast to play. So here's Man in the Box by Alice in Chains. And the final song we'll be talking about today is from the Guns N' Roses debut album, Appetite for Destruction, with Welcome to the Jungle. Now really, what is there to say about this song? Obviously Guns N' Roses with this first album blew everyone away. And I truly feel that Duff McKagan's bass lines are absolutely brilliant. Not only does he brilliantly do his job as the bass player holding down the root of the song, but they complement the guitar part so well. And not only that, but he just adds so many little fills and little tricks that just jump around where you can tell he had such a blast playing this. I think Duff McKagan is really an underrated bassist because he just does this for almost every song it seems like and I absolutely love hearing the isolated bass parts of his lines just because again they're so fun and they're so intricate but without further ado here's Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. <laughs> And that's gonna be it today for five killer bass lines in that E flat tuning or half step down or D sharp. Again, doesn't matter what you call it, just tuning differently can add so much creativity to your workflow and just really make you think outside of the box. As always, thank you all so much for watching and taking this journey with me. Let us know in the comments below what other great alternative tunings we should check out and what other bass lines have really weird tunings out there. I think really changing it up tuning wise can just lead to so much fun and again, a lot of creativity where you just wouldn't have really thought about something before. But thank you so much again for watching as always, and we'll see y'all next time. Mm -hmm.